Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tadaima Terrace House Podcast, your weekly companion to your favorite show on Netflix. I'm Robert Scarpanito, and I'm joined here by Daily Wilhelm. Konbanwa. Jack Cepeda. Irashai Masse. And hey guys, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I know we, we did two. Oh. We've done two watch alongs now. And both I, before both of them, I've said, I'm not ready. I have anxiety about with what's about to happen. And all of them, <laughs> it just it just came true. All of it came true with this episode we're about to talk about. Oh, and no. it was so it, it was worse than I imagined. Well wait, Colin, do you want us to cut? We can like redo this thing. This is podcast land. I can edit all this oh, out if you're oh, not okay. ready. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, he's not ready. I mean, emotionally, when are we going to be ready for what we just witnessed? It was heavy. It was heavy. It took a toll on me this episode. There were some things that I think we accurately predicted that would happen or maybe wouldn't happen more accurately. And then there were some surprises in this episode for sure. And let's get into it because this episode is jam packed with stuff. You would think that a uh, panelist leaving would be the biggest story, but. Ha. It was really. we were we were so naive. Yeah, that was just a footnote, man. Yeah. Uh, so today we're going to talk about episode 25 of Tokyo 2019 2020, the first episode of part three, which is exciting. And I'm sure that by now you have probably binged all of part three and we are horribly behind for you. But M- that's haps. fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Today we're going to talk about the girls can't do it. Uh, two days ago, we released our live reaction, which was harrowing and sad and tear-filled but uh now we're back to kind of dissect our thoughts and kind of go over the episode a little more diving into more details and more discussion so let's get the first elephant out of the room there are many Mm. just as a heads up the first one here can we just do what they did on the show real quick and can we just have like a moment of silence for tokui please but can we? Can we? Can we do voice a second? Like, voice is like all we have. Let's do two seconds. Two seconds here. Let's give it to Tokui right now. And there it is. Something's different, right? That's what you. That's what Yamachan said. They lost their fearless leader. He had to take some time to think things through. And I feel really bad for Babazona there. She just seemed lost on an island. Way on the left-hand side. They didn't, you know, out of respect, they didn't have someone sit where Toku is sitting. But, mm. like, Babazana's way over there. <laughs> eh, you know, yeah. she's... I think she's she's the... If Toku was the fearless leader pulling them from above, she's the, uh, the, the rock that pushes them from underneath. And, and so I think were, she's fine. They were a comedy duo, too, right? Mm, no? That, am I, not, not, I'm not, not sure about that. Were they not working sense. on something together? Okay, But they okay. definitely... Um, I think there's that that chemistry there that we're going to miss. I, I yeah. said during the the watch along, and I, I still believe it's true, um, that we're going to hear a lot more from Baba Zono as compared mm-hmm. to before. Mm-hmm. Um, but even even that said, it's like that almost brings more attention to the glaring space yeah. beside her. And I think real quick, too, yeah. we should get the audience up to speed in case they don't know what the hell is going on and why Toku is not here um so we did release a video man i don't know how many months ago now um yeah october, october. it's <laughs> into october, Jack's mind. october 24th 2019 never forget oh, that wow. day. uh basically yeah. uh Tokui had has apparently temporarily last we checked left entertainment uh due to uh, a scandal he was involved with with uh not paying his taxes essentially um so i don't know if i i don't remember i'm a little rusty on the details i can't remember if he was going to court or anything over that um yeah. he, he's paid it off it's just that now yeah. he's it, originally he was like he left the entertainment industry now i hear inklings that he's like coming back slowly we'll have to see i mean it, it's still really yeah. up in the air right now yeah it's waiting but, to see. yeah but nonetheless yeah toku has gone as as far as we know he's just gone from the terrace house uh terrace house annals of history moving forward <sighs> but now yeah. we have you tamara he's yeah cool rugby man uh i saw some of his highlights online just checking him out boy's tough he's a yeah. he's a beast yeah he's beastly i would not want him running at me full full speed ready to put a shoulder down into my stomach that would not feel good no he's, yes. he's very he looks very like good. a stoutly yeah. built man yeah this is the Burly. uh 
Is this the third uh, sports boy this season alone? Like this Tokyo 2019? I want to say yes. I Remember Rui? So. Who else? Who's the first? Ru- oh, the Rui, baseball. The baseball the boy. Baseball yeah. boy. I forget his name. Basketball boy. Kenji? And rugby boy. Yes. It's all big male athletes. Interesting theme going on so far. It's like and they're they- building up for the Olympics. Aww. When you said big oh. and then ma- followed by Oops. male, I don't know what the hell you were going to end with, but I'm glad it was athletes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. athletes athletes no it's really interesting though that they have all mentioned too that it's like oh me and the team watch this like this is this is a group activity for me and my sports buddies and, yeah, they, and they i think that's a really interesting and unexpected niche of terrace house fans and i love it yeah yeah it's- just the I'm loving the thought of because for me, whenever I've thought of the the boys locker room after the game, I just imagine like dank sweat and loud <laughs> celebration and pushing each other into lockers. But now I just kind of imagine everyone huddling around one person's phone watching the newest episode of Terrace House. And it's really wholesome, but still very sweaty. <laughs> it makes me think of the uh, it makes There's me think of the, the sensitive bodybuilder meme. <laughs> it's just like it's okay bro i i, I, Yo, I understand King. your pain and uh, yeah. let's watch the next episode you gotta watch what's, the next yeah. episode. what's the name of that that video game is it choa niki am i getting that name right oh it's choa niki is that it yeah that that's card. what that's what uh the robert's got in his head right now with what goes on after mm-hmm. basketball football games if you don't know what that is google it at your own <laughs> discretion it's definitely not incognito safe for work mode google like, incognito <laughs> mode 100 percent Oh my! Absolutely, no one else in the room. Yeah, if you know Gradius by Konami back in the day, Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's similar to that. Yeah, Uh, I don't know. Actually, speaking of the sports boys, uh, I don't know if y'all saw this, but the New York Times posted a recent feature with Rui Hachimura. Like one of their uh, writers actually did an interview with Rui about how Terrace House kind of brings him comfort, especially during these trying times uh, that we're living through. So it's like, that's kind of cool. Yeah. And he was, uh, what what was the stat you told me, Robert? He was the first uh, Japanese born person to be drafted into the NBA. First, first round draft. First draft. First draft. Mm -hmm. Which I assume is a big deal. I don't know enough about sports, but I think that's That's a a huge deal. Yeah. Okay. For for Japan, for the culture. They had, when he got drafted, they had more Japanese um, journalists there covering it than any other nation. Oh, Oh, that's cool. Including America. (laughs) It was in America. (laughs) That's good for Rui, man. Yeah. But, awesome. but it's, it's still nice to have uh, Tamara here as well. For sure. Yes. Uh, so let's dive into the episode proper. I think a lot of us uh, hit the nail on the head here when we said Haruka would drop, uh, would, would say no to Pepe. Uh, that's exactly what happened mm. in the playroom there. Yeah, that gives credence to our theory after watching Terrace House as much as we have that we keep saying when someone says, I've thought about it very hard. <laughs> run away run for the hills that's bad news it's going to be a no and so that this is really you know driving that point home mm-hmm. yeah and now if they if it's good news they're basically just going to sit on your lap and shove their tongue down your throat <laughs> or that's what we learned well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. also what we have observed yeah. um, Say, uh, Santa how, hit us up <laughs> yeah we're gonna yeah. say we're gonna say, we're gonna call that a, yeah. a net positive i mean have any of you guys ever been in a relationship <laughs> where like where the relationship's about to start and it started off with the person saying, like, you know, I'll give this a lot of thought. And uh, yeah, I will totally be in a relationship. Yeah, yeah. I've <laughs> given this a lot of thought and I want to shove my tongue down your throat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will send you a Google Calendar invite. Can I shove my tongue down your throat at 930 tonight? Let's, Please join this let's find WebEx a time that works for both of us. <laughs> I can set up a Zoom meeting. Wait, don't do that. I need to pencil, pencil this uh, tongue session in. <laughs> um but i don't know it's it's interesting that it's something that we all kind of thought when we when we first heard that pepe was joining the house i remember there are quite a few of us who were saying man if he's a mangaka that's that's a busy lifestyle i wonder how Mm -hmm. that's gonna get in the way of his love life and it got super in the way of his love life because that was one of the driving reasons haruka said surprise yeah it's like you're too busy like we don't hang out yeah one of the tragic parts about this is pepe's uh, when he goes and talks to um, Rio in the room, mm-hmm. in English, by the way, and he talks about, you know, one of his coping mechanisms for him to deal with his own workload. And that was by telling himself day in and day out, well, I'm doing this so I can mm-hmm. hang out with Haruka. That's so sad. Yeah. That's so sad. He spent the that many you know weeks and months doing that just so he could spend time with her, just to have her say it's not enough. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, Heavy. but it is what it is, man. Like, everyone... Everyone right. has something they're looking for in a relationship, and it just wasn't there for Haruka. 
Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I think the sadder thing to me is that this is Pepe says this a lot later throughout this episode about this 50 minute gargantuan episode. But he says, cool, the easy work is done. Now the work gets harder and longer (laughs) and I have to do more. So it's like if this if these past what, four or five, six weeks were his easy times it's coasting yeah like i mean easy is probably way too light of a word i'm sure it was still also difficult but like the fact that his workload's going to get worse from here on out like i don't know that kind of spells doom. unfortunate doom yeah, yeah. For, he's gonna for need another relationship he's gonna need another chair he's gonna wear out that first chair dude i remember so i forget if it was in a um a lost tape or if it was in an episode proper but at some point um yama mentioned that like oda uh, mm. um, Aichiro, Sensei, Aichiro, Aichiro Oda oh, one his piece. first name. Yeah, Aichiro Oda, who, the One Piece mangaka, who is famous for working himself into the hospital quite often, um, mm. was worried about Pepe in his <laughs> schedule. That's saying something. <laughs> mm-hmm. Why can't there be a better work-life balance with that? Why does it have to be such a sacrifice? Well, I think if we compare it to American comics, let's put on our nerd glasses a little bit here, right? Uh, Whenever you're thinking about one issue of, like, you know, a Batman or Superman comic, it's usually, like, there's a writer and then there's an artist. Sometimes there's, like, a line drawer and then a colorist. Right. It's usually multiple people working on one thing. Uh, And then on top of that, comics are usually two weeks apart, sometimes three weeks apart, like, between issues. Manga is once a week, every week, every year. You get one week off usually. Jeez. Full so, chapter. Yeah, Crazy, and right. and Pepe's working on all this alone, right? I mean, he has those two assistants who I assume would probably do like coloring in right. or inking, but mm. but he's still doing like a bulk of that workload. Jeez. And you still have to like supervise and be like, hey, let me check your page, or like, oh, like this is what I was thinking. It's still a lot to manage. Mm. Brutal, man. I hope it pays well. Well, uh, <laughs> did I open a yeah. sour? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so in the next yeah. scene, <laughs> <laughs> but it was still cool though to see him Rio, you know, interact in English, too. Yeah, you know, and it's not even the only time Rio speaking English in this episode. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is the first time I really felt like some of Pepe's like frustration with everything going on. Like, I think he channels it quite a bit into his manga because he's Mm -hmm. like, I have this, like people look at me and they're like, oh, you're Italian, you're very handsome. Like you must always get girls. But like, he has just very recently had kind of his glow up. Mm -hmm. And so he's very much still in the mindset of like the nerdy otaku that like never, really had that like playboy phase and i don't think he's going to have that playboy phase but yeah people are like oh you'll be fine you'll you like get girls all the time right it's like no i I don't (laughs) know i really don't man i i really got to ask the question because this came up a couple episodes ago when Uh hanukkah said let me read your fucking manga no she was nice about it but she sat at the table with them remember that and then she read like a bunch of pages and then she just got up and said okay i'm done and then just walked off like yeah i forgot about there is like you know i just wonder if maybe i mean she didn't seem like the the target market i guess for his content i just wonder if that had if she like fell in love with it if maybe she would be willing to forgive more of you know him not having enough time but maybe it just wasn't her thing so she's like eh Mm. nothing no foothold here at all to cling on to you know what i mean i just wonder if it played a role i guess because mm. it was weird mm. that interaction when she just read it and then left and didn't give any feedback right? yeah that's true I, also actually here's a fun thing to point out have you noticed too in their in their few moments of courtship it was always pepe showing interest in her interests he played pokemon go because she really really likes pokemon he really i mean i'm sure he likes sports cars as well but i'm sure he like you know, played up his interest in drag racing more because Haruka does that, right? And drew some for her, yeah. Yeah. Whereas for her, that that little moment that you just uh, told us about, Jack, that was the maybe the extent of how much Haruka showed interest in his interests and in his yeah. hobbies. She, seems she very still has different. Trouble caring about people. Yeah, manga seems to me, at least culturally um, speaking, from you know Western perspective, like to be very different than golf. And going out to bars and sports cars. 
You know, it's like yeah. on the other end of the spectrum there. So it's just sad. I guess I'm just sad that Pepe was all into it and he was like working so hard to spend more time with her and it just, you know, fizzled or didn't yeah. become anything. I think to I, I think based on what Robert is saying, especially too, I think that's it's kind of a silver lining that they don't get together, too, because if she's not putting much yeah. investment into his interests and she's not really taking yeah. initiative um, and also on the flip side, you have Pepe sort of making Haruka out like he's putting her on a pedestal, right? Like he's making her this person yes, that he looks forward things. to as this sort of relief from his work. And if they were ever to get into a relationship, yeah. a lot of that stuff, it's going to build up uh, as ill will, really. I, I'm not sharing interests or someone not showing mm. interest in any of your interests is, I mean, that's a fight waiting to happen, really. There is a sobering statistic that I have to share because I was expressing this horror earlier. Oh, and three. That's what we fucking are here for T20 ah, on relationships. Mm. Oh, yes. four, three. <sighs> fucking goose egg. Nil, nada, zilch, nothing, no love. And they were very boring <laughs> courtships. Well, well, and also boring. Well, yeah. <laughs> and they were, that none of them were good. And come on, man. We're in part three now. This is episode one, part three. And we're starting from square one. Because Rio, we'll get into it, but, you know, he ex he expresses how he feels about the two girls in the house. We are 0 for 3. This is bad would that be? Wouldn't that make it 0 for 4 if we count Shohei Cowdy? I mean, I think we, we are. We are counting those. I'm who am I wait, who are you counting? Wait, Kenny, 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 Kenny Marisiko, <laughs> Shohei Kaori, uh -huh. uh, yes. Pepe Haruka, yes. uh -huh. and then potentially yes, the Odio and, and Hana or Dio and Amika. That's four. We don't know yet, so I'm just waiting to count to say over four. But I yeah, mean, I guess yeah. let's need, average it. It's zero oh and three and a half. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like, come <laughs> on, come on. <laughs> I love rejections. I love watching rejections. <laughs> You're getting them. Da daily, daily. That, that doesn't translate. This is an audio format. <laughs> to, yeah, to, to finish oh, she out had the sarcastic eyes when she said that. Slash yeah. sarcasm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to explain Backslash the joke. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Here we are. Um, 03. Here we are. Thank you for that sobering statistic, Jack, because I is. was extremely drunk when we started this podcast, but now I feel clarity. I feel he's sober. Calm. Exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, sober I need now. some smelling salts here. I got those too. Mm -hmm. uh, and we go down to the kitchen. This is where Haruka tells Ruka about her side of the whole like, yeah, I turned on Pepe because he's too busy. And this is where Ruka also says, hey, also, since we're like OG, you and I were the only two originals left. Uh, I'm leaving the house tomorrow after oh. I make after I make my super good pasta that I've been going to cooking classes for. Man, that we haven't seen it, at Ruka. all. So now, well, I mean, there's just so, it's just like huge plot point after huge plot point after huge hot plot point here. This episode is so jam fucking packed. And now we got to spend time talking about Ruka because, yeah, he's leaving now. And I was very surprised to hear that. I actually thought he would be here long term. Mm. Um, I'm glad he could have that moment with Haruka, though, because like you said, they're OGs, you know, but mm. there's just a lot about his arc. I mean... I'll just focus on one aspect here where, like, I don't know of, of anyone quite like him ever in Terrace House before where girls liked him. Be my boyfriend moment. Girls were hanging out with him, playing games late at night, and nothing ever happened. Multiple times with two girls here, Risiko and Emika. And it followed the same trajectory. Didn't he admit, though, didn't someone ask him, like, you must have been popular in school? He said, yeah, I was popular. Mm. But it didn't necessarily translate to growth or maturity do you think he was popular in that like he's the cool little brother to have around but he doesn't he doesn't mature right he's just like always the cool younger one i don't know it's it's weird i just think he's popular because of his looks yeah mm. just superficial I think, reason i, I think, think uh, he definitely seems like someone in the context of high school that could be popular you know what i'm saying mm. uh yeah yeah, yeah exactly real i old, mean because yeah. there's a difference between living with someone and, and just seeing them for six seven eight hours a day at school or whatever um and, sure. but i think so if i have my math right so we, he's been in the house for about six months right at the time of this episode yeah about six months yes. um so Damn. i Damn. think though as far as personal growth goes i think ruka has come a long way so i, I 
am not I'm de- yeah. definitely not unhappy with this progress. I think he has made a concerted effort to change himself, make himself better, and he's definitely a far cry from the Udi that we thought he was going to be at the beginning of his time. So mm-hmm. the fear, yeah, that he would be. Uh well, sorry, yeah. were you gonna say something? Yeah, I was. All right. I think I think based on Ruka's whole arc here, right? Because we already watched all this. We already know. He he makes that car broccoli tropier, right? Uh and he gives a little speech in English and it's a very heartwarming and touching moment. And I think I think watching that scene f- solidified my character arc on coming around Aruka. And I think he's if we have to say good and bad members on Terrace House, he's one of the good ones. He definitely is on the positive side now. Absolutely. He had a very satisfying arc, I thought. You know, one of his greatest shames, the break the broccoli uh pasta carbonara style he judo flipped that shit and turned it into a big victory there at the end you know he mm, used the inertia mm. of that which is cool and my theory on ruka i don't think this is too far-fetched but the man was reading the comments and taking it to heart we were saying this long time ago we were saying this like four or five months ago like wait a second you want to be spider-man but you don't speak english you don't even we've said it multiple times you don't even go to the gym and work out you know, like, and he's doing all of this stuff. He's taking English classes. He's going to the gym with a personal trainer, no less. That's like pretty serious. And that's, it can't be a, a you know, a small investment in time mm-hmm. and money. Um, but he's in the comments, you know, and he's kind of taking the opposite uh, takeaways from Emika, right? Because Emika, we, when the, uh, the terrorist one, she's reading the comments, letting it defeat her. He's reading the comments and actually taking it as like solid advice. Yeah, mm. you know, and that's really cool. And I just overall, I totally agree with Robert there. He is uh, definitely on the good half. Um, I really was satisfied. I actually wanted him to stay longer because, you know, we've kind of had a Ruka drought over the last few weeks uh, or so. He's just kind of fading in the background. But um, I, I, I will miss him. I can't believe I'm going to say it, but I will miss him. <laughs> wow. I know. I didn't think you'd say that. Yeah. I didn't think because, you know, we we have had like the explicit conversation before where it's just like, get out, make some room for someone interesting. (laughs) Yeah. Come on. But I, I mean, it is just like, for me, it was very sudden, like sudden, like, um, Mm -hmm. I feel like it could have happened at any time, but I don't really understand like what triggered, like he was like, was it Haruka saying that like, yeah, she was going to leave or like what what exactly was the the catalyst that he was like okay my time is probably done here my my theory is that he just felt like he needed to right the wrongs and then get out that's what it seems like Mm. here that's why he timed everything the way he did you know i think he just wanted to show a good arc he i think he wanted to get out of the house he's like well i don't want to leave in this state i want to show that i'm improving and Mm, so that's my theory there Something I kind of want to throw out here to this group, because um, it's a way we watch the show. I think this is one of the very few times where we are the most caught up to all Tokyo 2019, 2020 content before we walked into an episode, meaning we've seen every another terrorist clip like preceding this mm, episode. Right, right? Right, right. So mm. we've seen everything from the cutting. Well, maybe not the cutting room floor, but we've seen everything up to here. So could you imagine watching this episode, seeing Ruka deliver the speech? But we don't what we didn't see. Those another terrorist clips were like the one that I think comes to mind for me the most is the one where he's working out. Right. Mm -hmm. Because for that, it's like this shows he's truly trying to do personal growth. And like Jack said earlier, like that getting a personal trainer is a really big deal. And that shows that he's trying. But if we had walked into it, which I'm willing to bet maybe 90% of people who don't watch this show or who watch this show very casually do not know about the Another Terrorist clips or wouldn't have seen this, right? Sure. Yeah. Do you think they would have come into this this episode thinking, oh, this kind of seems sudden for Ruka to leave. I don't know if he's really grown enough, but yeah, sure. I think it, yeah, oh, yeah, I think it would have been sudden oh, yeah. for anybody. It just was like, it took me by surprise. Like I said, I thought he'd be there kind of forever. Yeah, I, I think those people are, are just going to be more... Oh, maybe a little bit more negative leaning than we are toward him leaving, uh, given that we have mm. more context than the average Terrace House watcher. Uh, but I mean, as much as we gave him shit and as much as we made fun of him, I, I mean, I I think out of everyone that leaves in this episode, I might be the most upset about Ruka leaving. Um, but yeah, yeah, really? And yeah, but are you sure? I, I want you to think about the whole episode. Yeah, are you sure. Um, because well, okay. I mean, with the I mean Tokui, of course, but like out of the housemates, I I think 
Ruka, and it, and it's because he had a goal and he was he was trying to do something while he was in the house. He was really trying to improve himself, and he's shown he's made improvement. And I think that it's upsetting that he's kind of fallen into the background uh, in the past few episodes. But I don't know. It, I guess it was kind of comforting knowing that Ruka would always be there, and he's always kind of an idiot self. And we can always get some sp- yeah. some form of entertainment or interest out of what Ruka is doing, whereas. <laughs> Yeah, you can count on that. Or Pepe, he like he's going to continue to do his ma- manga thing, and I-, I love Pepe to death. Like he's easily one of my favorite housemates to walk into the door. Um, but at the same time, especially with him getting more busy, he just wasn't going to be that entertaining in the house. I can promise you. So, interesting mm-hmm. theory. Interesting theory. So, what I will say was that, you know, since what was that song called? Shohei song in O and D Rose. Rambling Rose. Rambling Rose. Rose. This was absolutely the most tears shed. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Goodbye. Mm. This was, like, really heart-wrenching for me. And obviously, you know, we're under, like, nationwide lockdown, so there's a lot of emotions <laughs> I'm carrying into this <laughs> when I'm when we were watching it live reacting and everything like that, but it still took a toll on me. Like, I actually was, like, really affected by that goodbye when everyone was crying and bawling. It was, it was tough times. Absolutely. Mm. I think it was super telling but i don't know what it's telling but i think it was super telling how much emika was affected by this yeah, oh, yeah. by Balling. ruka leaving like that definitely at least tells the story of you know them doing their thing and staying up late watching rom-coms and playing video games like we we know from hearsay that they have a very close relationship but i think this is the first time we really get to see like Oh, she yeah, really cares for him. Because mm-hmm. we never do get even, like Robert said before, we've seen all the extra clips and all that. So we've never seen a scene where it's Ruka and Emika together. Yeah, they're hanging out. Hanging out. Yeah, there's never yeah. a camera there. And that's her best buddy. You know, that, that was her ride or die, I guess, in the house. And now he's gone. And may, I wonder if he's, I wonder if now I'm just like speculating here, but I wonder if he is leave so quick to leave because maybe now he realizes that he doesn't have a shot at romance in the house. For whatever reason, maybe he senses that she's into Rio and not and doesn't think of him as that type, you know, as a as a boyfriend type, as a man. Mm. I wonder. I don't know. I I think I think he's just leaving the house. He's ready to go. Like, yeah. I think he's ready to fly the coop. You know, he swung out. Said, he, come he, home. he struck out on on love. He was pretty much pursuing almost every girl there. <laughs> Remember, we talked about yeah. that too, and nothing ever happened. So uh, you got to wonder if that played a role. I I do, anyways. Mm-hmm. I don't know. My my last thought here on Ruka is I think uh, we've seen a lot of members leave the house, right? Like from all the terrorist house we've seen. Um, and I know some people like to refer to it as graduating from the house, right? Ruka so even explicitly. Go. Yeah, Ruka even explicitly says like, I'm, re- I'm graduating terrorist house, right? Ugh. I think he's maybe the first person I've seen on terrorist house where I really do feel like he's graduating. Like, I don't know what school mm. he was in, mm. but... He improved so super hard from beginning to end here. That was the best quote when he said, if I didn't have this experience, I would grown up to have been a very weird adult. <laughs> he just sort of said it. I forgot about that. And it's like he's, so he's accurate. He's aware. So like, yeah, he's self-aware now. Like, I, I really do hope this is a positive experience for him. Um, you know, I know what he's been doing since. Should I just say? Go for it. Go ahead. He's been is, he, mo- wait, is he Spider-Man? No, but he's been <laughs> he's modeling. Spider-Man. He's definitely oh, yeah. been modeling, so he's making money that way, and I think that that's a great fit for him right now as he's young and he's got his youth, he's got his looks and his beauty. Yeah. Milk that for all it's worth. I would say, yeah, him. I mean, at least he's smart enough to, like, he's smart enough to know that he's a good-looking kid and he's going to take advantage of it. You know? Mm. Hey, go for it, man. More power to him. For sure. Uh, the next morning, we see Haruka and Ruka leave it's a pretty sad moment everyone it's like a big big hug fest and a big cry fest uh but that's it that closes the door on this chapter of the first six original members of tokyo 2019 2020 it was a sad goodbye man <coughs> you see two house members leave at the same time and then emika's just beside herself she's crying so hard she had to turn around and hug uh, hana mm. her mortal enemy <laughs> her mortal yeah I liked uh, the the short but solemn moment where like Rio's like we're gonna make sure that whoever comes next is gonna feel welcome. We're gonna throw a party. Mm. I thought that was really nice. It was really nice. Same. Yeah, 
I don't know. Rio right now seems just like the most positive beacon of joy yeah, in the he's, house. Yes. I mean, I would yes. say Pepe, but yeah, you know, <laughs> he's leaving. Yeah, I think Rio is going to become like kind of the rock of the house that keeps everyone together. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Uh, we cut to the panel here, and they all argue really hard about the cupping the cupping the hand on the knee thing. And I just I <laughs> think that's at least us worth bringing up here. Like, do y'all see anything there? Do you see their point? No. Well, their point. No. It depends on what the point is that they're trying to make. I think the point is valid when they're saying he's trying to deter Hana, because we learn mm. later in the episode that yes, he is trying to deter Hana. So whether or not something's going on, yeah, whether or not something's going on with him and Emika, I don't know yet. I would not be shocked at all if it was, though, because the way they have chemistry, they have this like weird, like primal sexual tension between them. Like everyone can sense this. I feel like I feel like so obvious. Yeah. But uh, but but I think that he was really just trying to kind of put the Heisman hand up, you know, like the stiff arm, like on Hana, you know, that he's not interested and he wants an older woman. Um. What I will, mm. what I will say okay. is with how we've been burned in the past with the editing on this show, um, it wouldn't completely surprise me if it came out that like something was going on the going on between the two of them off camera. Um, <laughs> at the same time, I think reading into the action of tapping someone's knee to comfort comfort someone, I don't think that's in and of itself worth reading into too much. It's not tapping though. It's not tapping. It's like rest your it's elbow, cupping. rest your elbow on one knee, then cup their other knee. I mean, Daly wouldn't do that to any of us, and we wouldn't do that to her, right? That's fair. Yeah, right? I guess it's That's a fair, fair point. There's an intimacy yeah. line yeah. there. I think that is crossed. Yeah. Yeah, I think as we all know from our eighth grade biology classes, the knees are one of the twenty erogenous zones of the human body. <laughs> oh yes, you have them all get memorized. People, yeah, I get people. Yeah, mad you just horny. just really rub on someone's fibula. <laughs> the knees. You know? mm. I I guess I'm just like I just think anything can be an erogenous zone. Anything with nerve endings, pretty much. But <laughs> yeah, hey, it's just me. It's just me. Someone just reaches out and puts an index finger on your nose, and in you're your like, nose. oh shit. She loves me. She's in love with me. <laughs> So you know, I was pooped. about to, I was about to use feet as the next example. That I was like, no, nope, that's uh, a real thing. No, no, it's a real no. actual. Stop. <laughs> yeah, you name a body part, there's someone out there with a fetish for it. I promise you that. Quentin Tarantino, yeah. we're looking at you. <laughs> oh, woof. <laughs> all right uh so uh the next scene is the same that one in the uh the Takikashita Hall where um. Ryo and his teammates are talking to him and he's that's this is where he reveals like oh he's into older women he doesn't see any of the younger uh girls in the house as prospective partners dun, dun, dun. Uh, I think yeah we've already we've already kind of touched on this uh but the one point I wanted to make with this scene is this scene felt the most um produced of the whole episode it felt very like hey bros hey teammates uh the terrace house crew is going to come in here and they need to film like yeah five minutes of me talking bullshit so can you just ask me questions about how it's like being captain and yeah it's like blocked it's like and, yeah, and yeah, absolutely and the whole set up. framing of the scene the, the the main thing here that we need to take away from this i think is that rio said he wants someone that he can ask for advice mm. he needs that and i understand and Another thing, too, how could I forget? He said, the next girlfriend I have, I want to marry. So I'm being very careful. That's mm. huge. That's yeah. that's massive. That almost puts up, like, almost like it's going to make it impossible for him to find anybody. Terrace House, with those expectations, yeah. I feel. And, I mean, even if, like, Hana or even Emika were, like, technically older than him in any way, I think that their personalities are much more, like, deferring so far. Like, in the times that they have gone out with Rio, they, like, you choose. Like, you pick mm. the restaurant. You pick, um, like, that we're not going to go shoe shopping. We're going to go to a hot spring instead. Right. And I, I don't think that's what he's looking for. He wants someone to take a little bit more charge and have that experience to be confident. And that's just not what's at the house no. right now. Yeah, I uh, I can identify with that. I don't know. It's a strange thing when you, you know, I guess have relationships. Sometimes you just want different things at different times of your life. And, like, I can identify with that saying, hey, I want to talk with someone that I can have, like, really deep intellectual conversations with that will actually give me very helpful and insightful advice. Advice. You know, he's got a lot mm-hmm. going on in his life. He's getting ready for the Olympics. 
you know, he needs to be, uh, you know, like we keep saying, he needs to like cut out all distractions, right, of his life. He needs to have like a good, stable mm. home environment to prepare. Definitely. So right. I, I get where I get where he's coming. Do from. you guys want to go into conspiracy theory territory with me for a second? Do we have a choice? <laughs> <laughs> so. Can on the, on the whole idea of <laughs> nope. Rio and Emika possibly being a thing off camera. So let, let's think about it quickly here. About Because so we have the, the knee tapping thing. We also have her, Emika, like t- making Rio take her out on these dates almost kind of forcefully. It almost feels against his will. But is it, though? Is this going to be like one of those Hayato, uh, what, I can't think of her names. What's that? Rico. Rico. Rico situation. Rico, Rico. You know. I hope well, he wouldn't make that mistake. I, like I said. I don't think he'd be stupid enough. Like I keep saying. Yeah. Like I keep saying though. I just. I don't think it's that far fetched. I mean. Is there anyone here. On this show. That. W- just cannot believe. That they might do something off camera. I think it's just like. Totally plausible. And totally yeah, that, possible. That's true. I don't. I don't think they're doing anything I, I, off I hope, camera. Yeah. I don't. I I, not. I'm not. I'm not accusing them of no. it, by the way. I'm not saying they are. I'm just saying if it turns out that they are, I wouldn't be like, what? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I would be like, oh, yeah. yeah that, no one of those, shit. like, fool me once, fool me mm-hmm. twice situations for sure. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Because mm-hmm. I, I just think they it's have chemistry. That... They have some something that you can't manufacture. Mm-hmm. They have yeah. chemistry. Like, if they were acting on that chemistry off camera, I think. That something would have like we would have had some hint of that because we have two different conversations between Hana and Amika where they both seem to be kind of on an equal I guess playing field as far as when it comes to Rio when they both kind of admit like yeah I like him oh mm-hmm. I like him too yeah. yeah yeah and I want to explore the possibility too that we could definitely be reading way too much into this knee tapping thing like he might just be that kind of guy and just does that to a lot of people. Well, because editing, this is the first time we're seeing sure. it, you know? So mm. that's, uh, you know, that's a possibility too. I know we're, those we're touchy, too. I know those touchy <laughs> feely kind of people. We had a, when I opened up a restaurant, hold on real quick, Robert, when I opened up a restaurant in Columbus, it wasn't my restaurant, but I was one of the first employees there. We had a manager there that was very touchy feely with all the girl bartenders. Uh, and we called mm. him and we called him sexual harassment, Bob. <laughs> What's his name? Well, and it's okay. like we all know these touchy feely people, like they're creepy. But I'm not saying Rio is that. Sexual I don't know what harassment I'm... Rio. <laughs> Sexual <laughs> harassment Rio. I'm not saying that, but I mean, he might be just one of those touchy feely people. So, are you saying that he's like a serial knee cupper? <laughs> might be. <laughs> that's not. It. That's might not be. any better. But we've only seen it once. Look so out. We, we have we a serial see... knee cupper <laughs> on the loose. <laughs> Pull your skirt down, girl. Take put those knees well, away. No, because you know there's that scene in this episode right where it's after rio's game which we'll get to remember he fir- the first thing he does is run into pepe and they hug each other right but then the editors what they did is they cut out the straight 20 minutes of him rubbing pepe's knee it's like oh, i did uh, i won and i earned my victory <laughs> <laughs> this is my oh my reward. god <laughs> <Your> knees <laughs> i hate it <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, <laughs> let's get back into the episode. Um, we're in the girls' room. It's Hana and Emika. Uh, this is the beginning of them kind of trying to be a little more friendly with each other. I think. Uh, yeah, trying. Um, Emika. Well, actually, the first thing they talk about is how apparently there's this the article going around where Rio's team announces on the terrace house, and all the fans are like, "You should be focused on training, not this bullshit reality TV show." Fair. God. Can- you, fair, but can y'all just like get off people's nuts? Yeah, good like come God. on, <laughs> get off my knee, man. Yeah, get off my to, knees, man. I'm just jumping ahead a little bit too here, fucking Rio <laughs> plays a killer game later on in this episode and gets like MVP. <laughs> yeah, so get off his nuts. He's killing. He's it. doing fine. He's not. He's suffering. putting time into practice. I get what He's you're fine. saying, but I get what you're saying. But when you're trying to be like a world class athlete, I get where I get both sides of the coin here. Yeah, fair. Um, but yeah, then they they say let's make plans, let's get some, let's grub sometime soon. Let's do a grub, do a grub. Messy, messy. Remember, guys, let's remember restaurants? No, we're going don't. and sitting at restaurants and high fiving people at a table. Like, Those were sorry. the days, weren't they? <sighs> Back in the before times. Uh, but yeah. Um. <laughs> 
And then the two girls come downstairs to the kitchen. Uh, and then Hana gets super duper fucking excited because she wanted to ask Pepe to cook. And lo and behold, he's cooking already. Uh, his friend from Italy sent over some sauce with some porcini mushrooms in it. Oh. And some some f- f- sweet pasta from Italia. Oh, that shit look good. Oh. The mushrooms and the bow tie good. pasta. My mouth is watery. Yeah, it was great. Uh, and yeah, this is where Pepe starts saying, yep, uh, it's going to be busy moving forward. It's going to be really busy. And frankly, this probably should have been the first sign for us to be like, yeah, he's definitely leaving the house soon. Yeah. In retrospect. Yeah. 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 I get yeah. nervous when somebody's cooking you shit. It might not be good news <laughs> at the end of the meal. <laughs> uh, and then we go to Kanai Kanagawa where Emmy and Hana they eat, uh, eat food at this place called Pizzeria Liana. Uh, and this is where they both basically kind of declare an amicable war with each other. Like they both reveal like, OK, yeah, I'm into Rio. Yeah, yeah you're into Rio. Uh, let's, you know, may the best girl win. Let's share this experience. When, when uh, Emika revealed that information to Hana, I just thought it was so fucking funny because Hana's like, oh, cool. She like smiled. It was like acted all like happy for her, and then high fived her. It's like, what? <laughs> it's, you know, it's, yeah, you hate this. You yeah. hate this. You're not going to be yeah. honest about it because it's awkward, but. I mean, maybe she's not like inherently like fuck you about it, but she's like, oh, that's going to be inconvenient <laughs> or like, oh, that's kind of disappointing because it did seem like a new step forward for them in their relationship because yeah. Emmy finally was like, yeah, you know what? I get what you were saying about me and Ruka when you were yeah. when you were pushing things. I, I, I see what, what you meant watching rom-coms together of course you would think that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i i like that emika says too that here's the real reason i was so mad about it it's because i like rio that, right so it's like yeah she's becoming very honest and this is like a good step to them building a good i mean it'll be a relationship i don't know if we can call it a friendship but it'll be a good relationship that's what yes, i brought talking. up during that whole episode and what we talked about as a show was that this is a problem. They're having an argument right now because Emika cannot be honest and open with her feelings for Rio. Everyone knew it. The panelists knew it. Everyone knew that she was upset about that con- how that conversation went when the braids were getting taken out of Hana's hair because she mm. liked Rio. Everyone knew that, but Emika just wanted to hide that fact for whatever reason because they didn't have good communication. So I'm glad yeah. at least they're opening up that channel. They can be open and honest about it and discuss it, you know, civilly, it seems like here. Um, better late than never, yeah. I guess. So, do you guys think this is going to turn into a similar relationship to uh, Noah and Shohei from OND? Kind of like best best man no. win? Because obviously the difference is no. uh, the person that they're going after likes no. neither of them. So Exactly. And they're fighting over a fucking prize that is not even there. Right. And they don't know it yet, but we know it. It's juicy. Tragically Mark juicy. Your calendar. Mark your calendars, everyone. Episode 31. That's going to be the episode where this episode 25, 25 is live for the Terrace uh. people. That'll be the episode where Emika and Hana, if they're still in the house, who fucking knows. Right. That'll be where they see Rio say, I don't like either of them. Oh, say it again. Which oh, one? Oh, shit. I 31. feel that's too okay, far so away. I feel like it's going to happen before that. Yeah. This shit's going to happen. Yeah, that's, that's that a lot of time. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe already. If you're binging, you've probably already seen it. Yeah. You already know how wrong I am. Oof. Probably. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, that, that's, it's good to see them finally be honest with each yeah, other. Just be transparent. It's, it's a good start. Yeah. It's just a good practice. If Han San was there, he would have told him this long time ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, then we cut to the scene in the Yokohama Bunka gymnasium. It's a home game where the B Corsairs dunk on Akita 75 to 60. Uh, Rio is fucking a beast on the court. Yep. He destroys. Um, oh, yeah. R- yeah. Why? Oh, uh, Rio. Ar, why? Why? Oh. oh, Rio. That was so I, cute. Pepe. Was so so cute. I just fan. love that Pepe comes in there wearing a vest and then the next shot of him that we see, he's wearing Rio's jersey. <laughs> jersey. Yeah. And he he's drops his swag. vest on the ground. Actually, I saw that a couple times. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, Rio, yeah. though, yeah, he's very good. He's team captain for a reason. He got the mic at the end of the game, thanked the crowd for coming out, saying, hey, we need your support when, you know, games don't go that well. So, you know, thank you for being here today. Mm-hmm. It was highlight, man. I mean, he is, yeah, he's just as good as Captain Tsubasa, you know, ever was. It seems. And can I make, 
can I make that moment a little sweeter? I'm willing to bet that when he said like to the crowd, thank you all for your support. I'm sure he meant that, but I also think part of it was him saying that directly to his parents who might've been in the crowd because remember he chose that team because he wanted to be close to home. So he could have totally been saying that like, Hey mom, dad, thanks for coming to this game. And I hope you continue to support me. I hope they come on the show at some point when we see them. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Mm, Wonder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, the other thing I want to point out is, uh, yes, he does hug Pepe at the ah. end of this game. Nothing really and jump, for Hana and Emika, just, just high fives. Like, hey, yeah. hey guys. Just high fives. And he's like, oh, I'm yeah. sweaty, I'm sweaty. Yeah. He didn't say that for Pepe. Pepe. What's crazy is that they're where, they're breaking the rule, at least here in the West, we have a rule. When you go, it's an unspoken rule, when you go see the concert of a band, you don't wear the shirt of the band you're going to see at the concert, but Emika didn't get that memo because she's wearing his shirt. With his face all over it to his, his to, pirate shirt. Yeah, to oh, the game. Um, I didn't know that was a thing. And then Hana had Me one, neither. but um, she, I think she said it was wet, so she didn't wear it. And then Rui is like, I'm not, I don't feel loved. <laughs> so he wants them all to well, be adorning his face. Wouldn't you say it's different though for sports? Because like people wear jerseys for like their home games all the time. I'm not time, being serious. Like I'm just making game. a joke. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna keep doing it anyway. <laughs> yeah, I will wear a basketball jersey to a basketball game or a football jersey to a football game. Totally. Right. Right. But yeah, then we uh we go home, we're in the living room, and it's Ryo and Hana. And here it's like kind of eerily apparent how much Ryo is super not into Hana because he's doing electrotherapy on his foot and she's just trying to make basic small talk and he's not he doesn't seem to be giving her that much, I think. Uh and then she brings up like, Oh, I had really I had a lot of fun the last time we drove, and he was like what was when what was that he just blanked didn't even remember <laughs> and she had to kind of like jog his memory like oh you know that last date we went on he's like oh yeah that was fun oh like ooh, not good mm. yikes yikes guys woof yeah i don't know i mean i don't know if hana got the message there but she's still like hey let's still get dinner sometime well and he's like yeah sure yeah i and like okay the thing about we'll it is no oh, sorry, i think she just good. I think she's fighting for inches here, man, but I don't doesn't feel like she's getting anywhere. Not not with the BO. The thing up mm-hmm. the thing about it is that ever since that conversation she had with Emika, now the girls are distracted with each other. You know, like they're trying mm-hmm. to beat each other and trying to win over one another rather than paying attention to Rio and what he's doing and what he's not doing is my theory here. Mm-hmm. They're more focused on winning now right they're not even thinking about what rio wants it's all about what they want they're going to be completely blindsided that's exactly it it. and i think even if even if rio like picked either one of them i i think they would be they wouldn't even really know rio like they (laughs) they would be so focused on the competition that they wouldn't even really like the prize at the end they were just more so concentrated on winning like robert said the the idea of him uh, yeah, I just want to go around the table real quick. Just like if you had to pick one, who would it be? Emika or Hana to be with Rio if he liked one of them? I'll go first. I would say Emika because their chemistry. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm in the same boat just because they're both like. They're both just horny for each other. Yeah, exactly. I feel like that's more interesting to mm. watch. Yeah. I like Hana. I'm, I'm in the Hana camp. Why though? Why? Yeah, why? I'm also going to say uh, that. Yeah, but yeah, why though, Colin? Because I I think Hana means really well, and I I think if she just got over her sort of I don't know what it is like giddiness over Rio, whatever you'd call it, nervousness, shyness. Yeah. I mean, we we've seen yeah. especially during the onsen date that they I mean they can have a good time together. They have a chemistry there, um, and I just. I mm. like how she isn't like super demanding when it comes to that sort of thing too. Like Emika is like, oh hey, you need to go take me to sushi in Ginza because I wore your shirt, and it's like that's I don't know that that mm. sort of thing is just that that doesn't feel like a relationship. It feels like you're just making someone kind of your slave. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Yeah. So similarly, like um for me, it it is that um that dinner date after the onsen date that i believe was just a lost tape versus a like actually in the episode but the conversation they had was very mature they were able to go back and forth and it wasn't you know all about rio or it wasn't all about hana they were able to share a lot of um things about themselves and it just it felt 
like a date proper and i haven't gotten that same vibe with emika exactly. yet mm -hmm. i can see that well uh let's let's go to the one of the happiest parts of this episode shall we where we go to a little tiny kombini uh the yamazaki <laughs> y shop in daita sankatsu uh where pepe walks in and he finally sees big comic spirits this week's issue where it it has mingo chapter one oh, right there my gosh and even even at the top right of the cover there it is there's mingo and then it says like you know oh, the guy from terrace house his manga here it is this, first chapter was his, this, this one, was his dream yes this one episode had like so many highlights in it like it's like the amount of highlights that would typically be in an entire part in condensed in this one episode it's just like banger after banger after banger mm. um wow what a scene how satisfying after and they said that too after the basketball game rio said that you know he had his victory tonight but pepe's victory is tomorrow morning and it and really was it. Yeah. yeah this is probably this is my favorite scene in the whole episode <laughs> um and it mm. like Seriously. the panels the panelists say after this uh the scene they say it's, it's just like a movie where rio walks into this this combini sees his, his magazine or his manga on the rack takes it off he's like oh i'm gonna buy all of these wait i don't have enough cash for all these so i'm just gonna buy i'm just gonna yeah, buy three of them <laughs> so cute. and yeah that would have been heavy too because those oh they're real thick, thick. yeah um yeah. and so he takes it to the counter and she's like you, are, you know these are all the same right and he's like yeah my my manga came out in this one she and the clerk is so excited she <laughs> she's like i'm gonna buy so i'm cool. gonna follow that along you're my favorite manga <gasps> artist from now on <laughs> Be your biggest fan. I'll tell everyone about you. I'll make time to read it. It was so sweet. It was totally like was an anime so or something. Oh, absolutely. It seems. I mean, like this is this is the like we've only seen a meager slice of the culmination of him realizing this dream. Like mm. the boy learned Japanese, moved to Japan, started working like on art, like on other people's art, and then got a deal, drew his own worked on that for weeks and weeks and weeks and now he's premiered mm -hmm. and he's in like japanese kombini shops like yeah that's so crazy yeah what, what that's wasn't so, he oh, i'm so happy for him it is awesome wasn't he apprenticing too isn't that when yep. we first he apprenticed home under a, yeah another manga. so crazy yeah. man what a, it's like the dream it's like the dream gig you know it's just it's just i guess a shame that now he's married to this you know and yeah. he's not gonna have room for a life yeah really. but right. it's the life he chose but keep in mind too, he's being published in the same magazine as like hit superstars like Inio Asano, right? Not like I'm not saying Pepe's that big yet, but there's a chance he's he's in a very good place to be seen by many many people. Absolutely. It's pretty crazy, and uh, he's not doing like very niche stuff. It's like it has a very broad appeal. I feel like so, as far as manga goes. So these are lad mags, right? Like it's all chicks with like their their bathing suits on on the cover. Right, these magazines that he's in, <laughs> right? <That's just> yeah, <laughs> it's all about sex yeah, and like say. all his all his manga is like about like maybe having this loser having sex and like girls bending over and full nudity and all that. Right? It's I mean, like it's adult. Yeah, yeah. it's adult. Okay, it's I just mean, interesting Inyo to Asano... see it like in a big, you know, right in front of the door in front of this old lady. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh. oh yeah, <laughs> it's kind of funny. I just, just see, calling it how I see it. I guess <laughs> that's fair. Fair. Yeah, Inio, like Robert was gonna say, Inio Asano has some very graphic scenes in his in his uh, in his yeah. books. Um, so it doesn't exactly mm -hmm. surprise me that it's it's a magazine aimed at older people. Uh, Do you guys have any um, insight on this? Is this like more like single guys targeted, or is this like guys, girls, no matter like mass appeal, or like who reads these kind of manga? I'm just curious if you guys know. It totally depends. Um, it's. It big uh big comic spirits is definitely not like one of the like the very specific genre niche okay. it's more like uh seinen which is like the like upper level like more mature than like naruto more mature than like the typical like what we call shonen which literally means like young man okay so yeah. like what they have a broader appeal like it like girls and guys watch or read it but also uh i i guess mingo is just like it's it's a wide appeal for an older audience it's not yeah. like 
the very niche genre stuff that you can find in in other uh magazines interesting if that makes sense okay yeah basically science seinen magazines are like geared toward adults and more often than not i've noticed it's kind of geared toward like the adult male okay um but that's not to say it's like oh you're a, you're a girl you can't read this right right right, right. right, right. Yeah. Like, yeah 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 it just yeah. seems like a dude's magazine because, like I said, it's just usually you know young women in bathing suits on the cover. So you'd be surprised. That's just everywhere. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Mm-hmm. In Japan, I, I would you. just like to say on, on on Pepe though too is I I think it's so insanely awesome to see the product. Like we get to see the scene where he is experiencing the product of all of his sheer will and hard work. Like he. Mm-hmm. alone get like got himself where he is like he put the work in he busted his ass mm. you know yeah. made all those late nights yeah. and now he's here yeah he sacrificed a lot exactly you know he earned this moment he deserves it it was it was very satisfying to see you know but now he's like like he says now the real work begins yeah the wor- <laughs> the, the worst is still ahead yikes yes yeah i think this makes me think back to all the other times we've seen Terrace House members achieve their dream in one form or another, right? And it, it just makes me think that most of them are performers, usually. Like, it's it's usually someone holding a big concert, and we finally get to see them perform in that concert. Or it's like, they're a model and they get to walk down that runway, or they're in modeling school and get to walk down that cool runway, and it's a cool fashion show, right? It's usually some sort of performance. This is one of the few times in Terrace House where someone has achieved their dream and their dream is just holding their product in their hands. It's not watching him like draw on a stage in front of people for an hour. It's just he did all this work in the background that you haven't really seen. But then here's mm. the culmination of it in his two hands. And he's been looking forward to this for a while, too, as he brought up at, the, at 12, that fancy bar. Yeah. You know? so yeah. Here it is, man. It's very satisfying. I was kind of worried Though I will say, when it was Uh-oh. all culminating at the end, I was like, oh, "This kind of seems like a natural ending." I <laughs> hope he doesn't leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right; he doesn't leave, and that's the end of this episode. No, yeah. yeah in our what, own did, what did world. we say earlier about uh, be worried when people are cooking? Yeah, be worried mm. when they achieve something too. You know, it's... yeah. Mm. So we we go to the kitchen now. It's Hana, Pepe, Emika, and then Rio comes home. And I love Rio's energy when he comes there because he's like, I searched everywhere, far and wide. I hunted for these, but I found them. And he pulls out like bags with tons of copies yeah. of big comic spirits. Yeah. And everyone has this vibe of like, oh, sign my book, Sensei. <laughs> like, oh, it's so cool. Sensei. It's so great. Um, and then Pepe, to celebrate, he says, cool, uh, I've made some tiramisu. I'm going to leave this one in the fridge, though, for you to have tomorrow, which is sad in retrospect now. Mm. Uh, and he pulls out this like weird tiramisu dip kind of thing. Something I I've like never, Yeah, like I've never it. seen that before. But it's like you get the lady fingers, you dunk it in the espresso, never. and then you dip it into the tiramisu yeah, dip. Good luck. It's just going to be mush. Like, that was terrible advice. <laughs> like, I would just dip, yeah, I would just maybe stuff. just dip the finger in the thing in the custard, eat it, and then take a sip of. Espresso is probably how espresso. I would do it. Yeah. Oh, I want espresso. tiramisu again. I can't do that. That's pretty hardcore. I know, guys. Remember tiramisu? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it was good. Well, it means to bring joy. Yeah. In that. classic Pepe fashion, he always has a backstory to everything. Like he regaled us of the tale of how carbonata was first made. There's a story behind tiramisu, and I love that he's like, I'm I made this because I want this to be a joyful goodbye. We're celebrating, you know, my achievement. I'm celebrating my time here on the show, and I've made this thing that means literally to give joy, and tonight is my last night in Terrace House. It seems too short. His journey was too short in Terrace House for me. I mean, who would have guessed when we first saw him walk in the house? Hey, I'm the new roommate. Remember that on the on the mm. um, radio or the intercom? And it was like, Carrie's like, who the hell? We're coming in with all this positive energy. Who's this fucker? Who would have ever thought that he would just strike out with love because he seems so ready for it i just thought like mm. the girls were just going to be smitten over him we were smitten over him colin and daily still are smitten i over fucking much. love pepe um mm-hmm. yeah but I, I just can't believe that he just kind of struck out with that and we never really got any kind of closure or any um explanation about him and emika they went on that date i thought it was a great date zero follow-up zero Friendly. yeah zero they just both really wanted to go else. to the ocean 
Yeah. Yeah, I thought it might have been Here, a good thing, but it wasn't. Here's the explanation. Rio walked into the house. There Done. there it is. There it is. <laughs> That's the explanation. <laughs> that, yeah. In actuality, yeah. Yeah. Damn, but, Pepe. I don't know. I, all, all I have to say so far, because keep in mind, Pepe hasn't left yet. He's going to leave next episode <laughs> next week. Oh. But for now, he hasn't left. The thing I want to say, though, is thank you. Because, Pepe, you have given us joy. Yes. Thank you, in, Pepe. In these past 12 weeks, I think, he was on the show. Some. Yeah, he, he's been on was about long? as long as Risiko and Kenny. Was it that long? Mm. I don't know. Just my days are blurring. It doesn't seem like he... I would. I just want more, I guess. But I, I did take it as a bad sign that we would see scenes of him drawing back at his apartment. It's nearby, you know, the house. And he said that he'll mm. give everyone his address and they can stop in any time. Don't worry about um, bothering him because they're always welcome there. That was really nice. I hope that mm. they do. And I hope we see him again. He's in the neighborhood. It seems yeah. like he can, mm. it's, when they walk a distance is how it seems. Um, but I, I did back to what I was saying. I think it, I took it as a bad sign that, man, this guy, if he's just staying at his other place, like multiple nights in a row, as Haruka was saying, like, I was worried, like, how are you going to have a relationship with any of these people? You know? So mm. turns out that you can have one, but not, not a romantic one, apparently. So I wish him luck right. and love and hopefully he gets popular from the show. But whoever he dates is going to have to be very accepting of his his work ethic and his lifestyle now, which it's going to be it'll be hard for anybody. I feel like it's like military wife style. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Pepe. Thank you for making this this season of Terrace House good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, <laughs> he, he, he was the light that came in when we le- left You know, Shohei just fucking ghosted deuces. And then Kenny was just Kenny. And that's all I'll say. <laughs> But he was the. But when Pepe came in, shining beacon, positive energy, great vibes. Never did no wrong. Was very uh, big brothery, very supportive of Ruka. Never said a bad thing. Always turned Ruka's faults into something positive. I mean, great, great guy all, all around. So and yeah, I don't know. Funny. I have nothing bad to say about Pepe. I guess really don't. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I just I think what makes me happy is his his bro his bro relationship there's a word here for that um bromance but his bromance, bromance? that's the go. word thank you his bromance <laughs> his brother his, relationship <laughs> his brother his brotherly relationship with rio i love that that has happened because we still kind of it, it kind of feels like in a way we get a little bit of pepe living on through rio because they're both mm. i mean they're not the same person obviously but they both kind of have similar vibes and like you know, they Kinky. like to joke around a bit. They're both like kind of cheeky and confident, right? Um, and I think that's kind of solidified in one of the last things Rio says in this episode where it's something along the lines of Mingo will be our beacon of joy. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh. You know, and it's just like, that feels like, oh, that's great. Like, that's such, like, that's the kind of friend you want. The friend who will champion your thing <laughs> as like, that's yeah. my beacon of joy right um, now. Better than saying when we look up at the moon, we'll see the oh, same Oh, God, moon. that's too cheesy. <laughs> 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 oh, thousand, yeah. thousand percent. I didn't better. want to pass up that chance to dunk on Armand, even though I love the man. I love Armand, and and his new YouTube channel. What yes. up, Armand and Eric? Armand is on YouTube yeah. official. Yeah, they're doing shit. It's crazy. It's in Japanese. Same. But I think that that closes the door on this episode. This harrowing fifty-minute cry fest of an episode. Dude, it was rough. It was rough heavy. for me. I, this is a lot of tears. This is the first episode of the season that made me shed tears, man tears. Mm. It's a I hard did. episode to watch, man. Yeah, it was more than a single a tear. One. I will say I'm excited for part three. I mean, just in general, it's more new Terrace House, right? But I've been hearing some inklings on the subreddit where people are just getting like real nasty with with these newer episodes, and I'm like scared, but also oh. hella excited for all this possible controversy oh, we're gonna watch it. drama it's gonna be more episodes where i have to put like Let's my hands it. over my eyes and i can't like i can't watch <laughs> oh i hope so hey, honestly we'll see i am here for it bring it on same and we we will be here for it every week moving forward here we're gonna cover one episode a week if this is your first time kind of like you know stumbling upon wh- whatever this tadai ma thing is yeah uh yeah we'll be covering one episode every week of part three uh which We'll be horribly behind because you'll probably binge everything. But you because know, everyone's home fun. now, and don't blame yourselves. I'd binge it too if I wasn't forced to not. <laughs> Same. Yeah, we hold Jack at gunpoint every week to yes. make sure yes. he doesn't. Like he doesn't Jack, what are you it. doing? It's pretty brutal. Yeah, they <laughs> You're have not a, doing what I think you're doing, right? They have an anklet <laughs> on me that they can just remote shock me if they see me log into Netflix <laughs> at any time. Yeah, 
if if he's gonna be on netflix it has to be watching tiger king yes i'm behind on that by the way (laughs) um if you have any questions comments concerns any theories anything you think that we've missed you can email any and all those things to us at questions at terracehousepodcast.com or alternatively if you want to leave it to us in audio format we do have a phone number now that you can leave a voicemail at it's 614-349-6579 with our 100th episode coming up we'd love to maybe play some of your voicemails uh, if you have anything you want to tell us or the the world at large that listens to Tadaima. Um, so yeah, feel free to leave us a uh, little voicemail at 614-349-6579. Yes, please leave us a voicemail. I want to hear those. Do it. Same. Same. Do it. Do it. Uh, next week, we will cover episode 26 of Tokyo 2019-2020, Internationalization at Once. What is that? Whoa, what? What? Keep is it, this a Bond film? What the fuck? Keep it. It's 007. Once. Internationalization at Here's once. the thing. Do you think we're going to get, because they Thanos snapped the house, like half the people are leaving now that Pepe's out, right? It's going to be just mm. that love do, that love triangle. That's not really a triangle. But are we going to get three people in one yes. episode, you think? We better. Dude, that's a lot of chins and shins. Didn't that happen? That happened in OND, right? Three Wasn't people it? in one episode? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like Soda and Maya and the another girl. Really? Uh, right? I don't remember. Okay. I can't remember if it was all no, it was it was spread s- out across two episodes. I thought that I never, I can't remember them ever doing two in one episode, or three in one episode. I think two, but I could be wrong. I, I need to go back and check yeah. the tapes. There's a lot of but, Terrace House uh, out there, turns out. Yeah. Just keep track of Three yeah. new people, y'all. But yeah, we'll. We'll be here. I'm excited for these hopefully three new people wow. one episode. Wow. Uh yeah. I say let's just let's just end this episode so we can go fucking watch let's it because I want to go see it. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do uh, it. Yes. This has been Tanaima. Thanks for listening. Itakimas. We hope you enjoyed our show. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to ding that bell to receive notifications when we publish brand new content. Follow us on social media and check out our brand new Discord server, linked in the description below.